serious, people of Reddit who have practiced or witnessed acts of the witchcraft, voodoo, or the occult, what was the strangest slash most unexplainable thing you saw? NSFW Not sure if this counts but When I was in high school I had this sudden bout of nightmares and sleep paralysis. I wasn't going through a stressful time or anything and I don't freak out easily. I grew up watching 80s and 90s horror films and I normally sleep with total darkness and doors closed. These nightmares were super sudden and happened almost every night. It was constant sleep paralysis where my room was on fire, or there were bats thrashing around above me, or there was a figure hovering over my body and I couldn't breathe, the classic. Sometimes my speakers let out strange frequency type sounds even when it was switched off. Things would fall off my shelves etc. My mom would always find me sleeping on the couch the next morning with the TV on because it was so crazy. Suddenly it all stopped, and when I told my mom she admitted that she had seeked advice from a priestess who engraved a blessing for me on a silver pendant and instructed my mom to place it in my room. She didn't want to tell me to see if it would work. I've never had such episodes since. When I was a teen a bunch of my friends went through a Wiccan phase. I honestly thought it was a bunch of hooey but played along for the most part, because hey they could have got into drugs or horses instead right? But despite thinking it bullshit there was one moment that made me question things. Us girls had met up to hang out, and one was brandishing a wooden walking stick. I have poured my energy into this totem, she declared, then started passing it around the room. The others cooed about how they could feel the power within as they held it. Course someone handed me the stick eventually. I could barely contain my eye roll as I took it. As I held the walking stick it sent a tingling sensation up my arms. I passed it on quickly. Not as dramatic as some of the stories here, but gosh that was weird. This is a pretty mundane story, but I feel it captures something of what real magic might be like. I used to work in an occult bookstore. We sold mostly psychic nonsense and spiritualist new agey stuff. But there was a bookcase in the back with the real expensive stuff. And the owner was this real old, real wise man. This woman used to come in when I was working and she'd just talk. For ages and ages. It was a non-stop stream of bullshit. She knew this, she did that, did you know about this, on and on. She'd suck up a ton of time. If you've ever heard the term energy vampire it would apply here. When she left you'd just feel drained. One day she comes in while the owner is there. She walks up to the counter and starts her shtick and he's very polite, and listening, but she just sort of runs out of steam. Like, within 60 seconds. She hums and haws a bit and then walks out of the store. It would usually take me an hour to get rid of her and he shut her down in a minute flat, with a smile on his face. I mention it to him and he says, there's a circle of protection painted under the floor for a reason. I went to a voodoo shop in New Orleans that had a lot of signs up that said no pictures. My boyfriend's mom wanted some voodoo dolls and wanted to see pictures of them before he bought it. I told him not to because I had a bad feeling about it. Immediately after taking the picture his cell phone lost signal, mine was totally fine. He couldn't send the picture so we walked outside and a car drove by and splashed him with water but I was dry. Freaked us out, I told him to delete the pictures and we had to buy the two dolls he took pictures of. I was the victim of a bear walker. In First Nations culture, a bear walker is someone who uses our sacred medicines for bad and not good. They can make someone very sick. Only a medicine man may reverse it and it often comes as a gamble for the bear walker. Once reversed, they will suffer more than the one they made sick. I was 20 years old and very healthy. One night, I had a dream I was in a field and was picking wildflowers. From each direction, a tornado was coming at me. I woke up in a fevered sweat. That began two months of sheer misery. My doctor kept saying that I had a UTI. She would give me antibiotics and it would subside for a while. I lost 40 pounds in the span of two months. By the end of it, I couldn't walk. Barely ate. Finally, my mom got tired of it. My sister bundled me up and we went to the hospital. Though an earlier ultrasound showed nothing, there was a huge growth on my ovary. A few days later I had surgery and when the doctor came to visit me, he said he never seen anything like it. It was a yellow almost concrete like substance around my ovary. I got better. But my mother remained unconvinced and scheduled an appointment with a medicine man. We gave him tobacco and he smoked a pipe and sang a song. He said something along the lines of a woman seeing me at a powwow. She became interested in who I was because of my mother. She threw a piece of medicine in my path. I stepped on it and it went up the right leg. He asked me if I still felt it. I said yes. He took a bone, what kind I am not sure. Placed it in the area and began to suck, 
Weird I know, he started vomiting yellow. Vomiting yellow. Like the doctor said. He gave me medicines and rituals for my mom to do. I went home that night and slept for 13 hours. My sickness never returned. My sister was slash is really into occult slash Wiccan slash witchcraft kind of stuff. I think she meant to be Wiccan, but a 13 year old isn't incredibly discerning. Around the time she got into it, our house started to get incredibly creepy. We would see things move out of the corner of our eyes. Nobody wanted to be home alone. Nobody wanted to be in the living room at night. At first, we could blame it on the house and the land. Then we moved, not just houses, but continents. The weird stuff followed. All of it was always centered around my sister and her room, and it was always aggravated when we did serious cleaning and especially when we moved. The height of it was when we were moving back to the US, we had two different flight groups. My mom and sister left six weeks before the rest of us to pick the new house while my dad, brother and I cleaned and packed at the old house. We heard thumping from my sister's room, the windows and doors would open and close on their own, not possible from just the wind, and shadows would move a wildly under the door pretty much every night, even with the blinds closed. I'm not sensitive slash discerning of that kind of stuff, but it was plain as day even to me. It was only my sister finally moved out of our next house and we cleaned out her room that it all ended. Whatever it was, it was tied to my sister in any sort of disorder slash uncleanliness. These stories remind me of my youth. I once met one guy on the internet, who practiced stuff. Before we ever met, I told him to make a summoning circle, like the ones you do when trying to reach a deceased person, but to reach me instead of someone deceased. At that time, I was quite delusional about my body. I considered my chest narrow and fat, but everyone else would say I'm very broad, strong and muscular. But we only had each other's close-up face selfies. No way to see the body types. So he made the summoning circle and tried to summon me, but it didn't seem to work. Then we both went to sleep. The next morning, he said he had a dream about me, and told me that he saw me looking very strong and muscular with broad shoulders. But I also had a dream, where I saw him. He was very skinny. Then we met in real life to verify that. I was exactly like in his dream, he was exactly like in my dream. He even had the same scent about him. I was into witchcraft for a little while in high school. I was a white witch, or at least trying to be, and I got really into tarot cards. Being a dumb teenager I didn't know how to properly use them and instead of using them as an extension of my subconscious, I instead thought of them as their own entity. I would speak to them as if they were their own person. I never got good readings from them. After a while of using them, I would have a feeling of something watching me around my house especially at night. It would follow me around the house and would be in my closet when I would go to bed. The feeling of anxiety and dread that I felt kept getting worse and worse to the point where I wouldn't sleep at night. At some point I stopped practicing and it didn't go away. It would take a solid few months until it stopped. After it stopped, I went to look for my cards and my crystals. I could not find them. To this day, five years later, I still have no idea what happened to them. I have no doubt in my mind that whatever was following me had something to do with it. TBH when I go to my parents house even now I still feel like it's watching me, but it's not as intense as before. I rented a house a few years back and never believed in paranormal or any sort of spirits etc. My first week in the house was find a few creaks here and there, but nothing major. I very soon started to feel like I was being watched or just a presence in general. The third week I started waking up in the middle of the night with large scratches almost cuts going the length of my arm. From my wrist to my armpit three scratches all parallel. Always on my right arm. I didn't think much of it. One night I hear a loud bang, go to the back and notice my back door was open. Okay no worries, I shut and lock the door with a deadbolt. Next morning I wake up and the door wide open but the freaky part the deadbolt is still in the locked position as well as the knob. It really starts to freak me out now. I start telling a person I work with about this stuff. He told me his sister was a Native American shaman priestess whatever it was and she would come sage bless my house if I wanted. The next week she came over with I believe it was called sweet grass and sage. She burned the sage walking around and told me can definitely feel a presence in the house. She hung the sweet grass over my bed and ever since I haven't had anything strange happen. Very strange. When I first became a pagan, when I was 15 or 16, I celebrated Ostara by leaving an offering to the Fae outside on a wooden slab in my garden, which was fenced off and only accessible by going into it from the house. The offering was a little cake made with eggs and flowers, and the next morning, it was gone, and in its place was a witch's whisk, a bundle of blackberry sticks bound with a vine or something. 
None of my family members, mom and her husband, were home the day I left the offering, and neither had any idea as to where it could have come from. I believe them because my mom is terrified of the paranormal and her husband is straight-laced and humorless, not the kind of guy to pull pranks whatsoever. To this day I still have it. I'll post pictures if anyone wants to see. I got into Levy and Satanism about two or three years ago and in the book there's a section that said don't pray to the devil himself or something like. So one night I did and nothing happened. A few weeks later I had the most vivid dream that stuck with me even to this day. In the dream I'm in one of my old high school classes but all the seats are empty except for the one next to me. I turn my head and see a super muscular guy in a black t-shirt say I heard you've been trying to reach me at which point his skin turns into a darker color and gets even bigger. We had a long conversation and at the end said what a waste of time after I said I was leaving. Once I open the door and take one step out everything was pitch black, silent and cold. What really creeped me out is that at the time I was abusing a couple of drugs, so one time my heart completely stopped beating for a few seconds as I was sitting in bed. I remember seeing that same door, the pitch black, freezing feeling before my heart started beating again. Doubt it's related but it totally creeped the hell out of me.